D is the nicest surprise of the season. A really sweet comedy with elements of romance and adventure. Starring that popular Aussie, Paul Hogan. Michael J. Crocodile Dundee. What a lot of fun. Good-natured comedy with a touch of whimsy that rates an eight. Judging from this comedy, Hollywood could take a tip from our mates down under. That's our weekend movie wrap-up. I'm Leonard Malton, Entertainment This Week. Leonard, I wish you were here with us right now. We're back in front of the Living Seas at Disney World. You remember earlier in the show, we made our scuba debuts on national television. Yeah, we were great there at uh, 10 <laughs> feet underwater. I'm not going back in. I'm not getting wet. But there is 6 million gallons of seawater in there, not to mention enough fish to fill the ocean, plus Lisa's good friend, the sharks. The shark. sharks, right. yes. Well, one time qualifies you to be a real trooper Thank anyway, you. right? All right. Our real trooper is our next subject, a big star that we've got an interview coming up with. She really has put her life on the line. Really, a lot of perilous duties she's had in the line of acting. One-on-one -on -one with Mary Hart, Kathleen Turner. Kathleen Turner made a sizzling screen debut in Body Heat, playing the consummate femme fatale. Then she spoofed that image in The Man with Two Brains. In Romancing the Stone, Turner showed more versatility, playing a mousy romance novelist. In Crimes of Passion, she played one of the most theatrical prostitutes ever seen on screen. Next, a female hit person in Preetzi's Honor. Now in her latest film, Peggy Sue Got Married, Turner plays a character unlike all the others, a 43-year-old woman who goes back to the age of 18 with the chance to change her destiny. And what's the meaning of this, Peggy Sue? Well... Uh, Mr. Snellgrove, I happen to know that in the future I will not have the slightest use for algebra. And I speak from experience. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about the five years of film that you have done, Kathleen, is what a variety of roles. Yeah, isn't it great? Have you really carefully picked each role, and is there a plan to it all? No, I can't honestly say there's a plan. I would like to take credit for that, but I can't. <laughs> it's, it's really, I think it's more that when I do one kind of role, I'm, I'm immediately attracted to a sort of opposites. You know, when I've done a nice girl, I want to do an awful girl. And when I've done an awful girl, I really have no desire to do her again. I think just when you've done one woman, you're just not interested in, in her again. You really, you really look for something out of line. But it's something that a lot of actors are afraid to do. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to make that stretch and break out of a mold. Well, it is, but that's because I, that doesn't seem to bother me that much. Uh, I just, I'm kind of more interested in exploring people's reactions than knowing that they'll accept what I do. What do you think is the most memorable scene of all your movies that people identify you with? Well, I gotta say, I think it's the one in Body where they break open, when, he, when Bert breaks open the window. I've read someplace where you said that you felt everybody could be sexy and sexy. Oh, yeah, I do, I do. I really think it's how you feel about yourself. I always have. I mean, there are certainly days that I think one feels better or worse, and there are nights when one feels glorious, depending, of course, on the circumstances. But um, I, don't, I don't think it's a question of makeup or hair or clothing. I think it's really, it's really how you feel. Yeah. At what point did you realize it worked for you? Well, um, I, I didn't used to think I was very attractive. And in fact, I, for many years, I'm not sure I was throughout high school and stuff. I don't, I, I don't know. I run into kids from high school now in London, and they tell me that I was I was just so stupid, I didn't know. But, um, but in college, guys started, guys started telling me, you know, God, your legs, and oh, you're this, and oh, that. And I, was, I started to believe them, you see, because it's nice to believe people when they say nice things. Um, and so then you start sort of emphasizing these. But I realized that for years I had the same assets and didn't feel the same way about them at all. So obviously it's attitude. A lot of people get bent out of shape. I mean, the ego gets out of control, and ultimately a lot of people become very unhappy with the kind of success that you're experiencing and will continue to experience. Um, how do you keep that under control?